come my way But you're still the one I want to go So many kids they won't block my way But you're still the one I need oh. Welcome to another episode of Chick Chat Live. My name is Cornelia, and on the episode today, we are talking about unpacking mental health issues in Africa and normalizing conversations around grief. Joining me in the studio, some special guests, very well qualified to talk about this subject. One of them is Phoebe Besimite. Yes. Did I get that right? Yes, <laughs> mental health counselor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank so you for joining much. us. Thank I have Zena Boa Amponsev. Realtor, did I get that right? I'm doing well with this, my <laughs> accent thing. <laughs> and of course, Kay Ado Bensi Enshil, image and grooming consultant. Did I get that right as well? Yeah. Well, thank you for joining well us, ladies. Now, we have a new tradition. I don't just want to throw out the question. I need you guys to pick a number between 2 and 12. Okay. Say it out loud. What's your number? 8. Mm, Zainab? 9. 5. Okay, Zainab, roll the dice. Let's see who goes first. Okay. 4. Five. Okay. <laughs> you get to go first. So let's get into the segment. First, you know, question of the day. You know, I, I feel that in Africa, we don't really talk about grief. And, you know, we have such huge funerals. And um, it's, it's an outward mourning. But we don't really talk about the emotional trauma that occurs after in terms of healing and getting back to life after you've experienced some kind of loss. Um, so I guess maybe I can ask what your first experience with losing anyone was and how you kind of came, came through and what, what you felt was missing um, from people around you and, you know, what your coping mechanisms were. I have experienced it three times mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't that easy. Mm -hmm. I had family, very close family members who were there to support me mm -hmm. and I believe that's what every other person is looking out for mm -hmm. that support. Where is it coming from? Sometimes the support can come in from friends mm -hmm. because it really shouldn't really be a family member yeah. per se, depending mm -hmm. on where you can find anybody, yourself yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And um, with my late sister, I had her children who mm -hmm. lived abroad and their first thing they said to me when they heard about their mom's passing on was that, well, Mum always wanted a particular way of um, moving to the next world. Mm. And I knew what they meant. Mm. She didn't want to be buried, but she wanted to be cremated. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is also an area which mm -hmm. is not too common mm -hmm. then, or was mm -hmm. not too common then, but now mm -hmm. it's kind of picking Especially up. Especially in Africa. It's Especially, not a common yes, thing in Africa. Yes. Yeah. So... Um, uh, in Africa here, or from where I come from, the mm -hmm. setting is such that you need a lot of consultation, talking mm -hmm. to the elders, mm -hmm. talking to the village head, mm -hmm. talking to the head of the family. And uh, there are lots of frequent visits to the village mm -hmm. to discuss certain mm -hmm. ways of handling mm -hmm. such um, an event. Again, where we come from, mm -hmm. it's not really common. I mean, it's not heard of. Mm -hmm. But you need people who understand mm -hmm. the fact that, number one, the children don't live here mm -hmm. and they want to feel their mother. And yeah. I know the mother did always want that to happen. She mm -hmm. wasn't always seeing them anyway. Mm -hmm. So this to them mm -hmm. and to her is an opportunity. The nice thing is I feel my sister around me all mm -hmm. the time. There are times when I even sound like her yeah. and I know that mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. tell me. You sound like her, you look like her. Mm -hmm. At the point, I used to have my hair short, mm -hmm. but then I didn't like the fact that everyone would Compared remember her. her. Yeah. They would remember her, and mm -hmm. I, I felt sad. Yeah. Yeah. And so I decided, okay, let me grow my hair mm -hmm. out. Oh. So there are ways of coping, mm -hmm. and so that was my Way. coping yeah. mechanism. So not, what would you say to that lingering effect of grief and how, you know, walk us through some of the mental health um, suggestions or tips to kind of cope with it as you go along in life? Because it doesn't end. Well, that's a very good question. And it's very interesting. We, I think, Zainab and I had a short dis discussion about it. And um, 
I like the term you used to say, they can be quite unforgiving. Mm. And I believe that, you know, in our culture, we actually do not understand the process of grief. Mm. And, you know, everybody goes through a number of steps when it comes to mm -hmm. grief. And it also depends on how you lose a loved one. Mm. You realize that um, some people, when there's a long illness mm -hmm. or, you know, it's, it's a gradual out, passing yeah. and it's drawn out, you realize that their response is very different from mm -hmm. when it's sudden. It's sudden. And the person is suddenly cut off from you. And mm. that gaping hole that is left, um, it's something that we we can't ignore mm. and you can't just sort of gloss over yeah. and move on yeah. with your life. life yeah. um, I'd rather avoid the technical terms and all mm -hmm. that. I just want to speak, you know, from as a real person mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. you know, I can relate to people. But yes, because there are these two different types, unfortunately, our culture says go through it the same way, mm. no matter what you went, went through. through. Mm -hmm. And also we need to bear in mind the person's, mental state mm -hmm. or their personality mm -hmm. you know you realize some people are more sensitive than others um some people yeah they are a bit stronger but depending on the kind of situation that they're going through mm -hmm. the way it will cut them down at that time mm -hmm. may surprise you mm -hmm. because you don't really understand the level of connection and i think that's the problem with us uh, we don't value our connections mm -hmm. as people mm -hmm. emotional connections emotional connections mm -hmm. thank you we don't value those connections with each other even mm -hmm. the psychological connections mm -hmm. with one another um for instance i mean when zainab was feeling a bit sad mm -hmm. i understand that okay i'm her friend so i put my hand on her mm -hmm. so she feels that support mm -hmm. you know it strengthens her resolve mm -hmm. i'm strong enough i can do this mm -hmm. i can talk about this subject mm -hmm. you know these are things that we have to value as a people mm -hmm. so when someone loses a loved one and it's sudden. The last thing we should do is to tell them to move on mm -hmm. and start laying out the rules mm -hmm. about what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, it's the one week we have to meet. Mm -hmm. um, where's the money? We have to start talking finances. Mm -hmm. uh, family have to come down. It's all about the funeral mm -hmm. yes. than the grieving. Yes. Than the grieving, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. The funeral and grieving are two very separate mm -hmm. things. The funeral is an event. Yeah. The grieving is a, a process. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's the same with weddings. Wedding, yeah. events, yeah. marriage, <laughs> marriage process, yeah. Yeah. you know. And so we need to value the process as well as the people. And I like what Auntie Kay said about family mm -hmm. and, you know, friends and the support system. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. But unfortunately, our support systems also do not understand what they need to do, which can also be a challenge for them as well. And you realize that they become burdened with yeah. the weight of the person's grief because they don't know how to handle the grief. I think sometimes we hesitate a little bit too much. And I think that that's, that that's the reason for having these conversations to find what some of the appropriate ways to, because there are a lot of inappropriate things that are said and done in, in people's ignorance when they don't know what to say, because it's a very uncomfortable thing. I've been through it, but even at that, I don't know how to, the first thing I'm, I mean, one of my friends lost um, her dad. Yeah. And I called her and I said, you know, I'm praying for you. Girl, that was the wrong the thing wrong to thing say. To say. Yeah. Because all she had to say was, where was your God? Where was he when my, what did I do wrong? Because I think yeah. she had lost um, both parents almost back to back. Like the timeline wow. between losing her mother and her father were too close for her to, to, yeah. to deal with at the yeah. time. Yeah. So she was very polite when she initially picked up. And just that little line of, I'm praying for you, yeah. set her off. I was like, yeah. well... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you know. So, yeah. You don't have to say, say anything. anything. Mm. Yes. Mm. You don't have to say yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 You don't have to say anything. Exactly. I mean, we are such a communicative, mm -hmm. you know, focused people. You don't have to come, you don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. Communication comes in different ways. Yeah. You can have nonverbal communication. Yes. If you yes. just put your hand on the person, you can mm -hmm. just be there. You can just say, oh, do you want to eat? Here's mm -hmm. something to eat. But you, most importantly, you need to respect the grieving process. Yeah. Yeah. And I think in our rush to give them an answer, because because we don't know how to handle grief, mm -hmm. immediately we want to give an answer like, 
oh, it's going to be well. You don't know what, yes. what the word of God says there in heaven. Yeah. No, yeah. don't give me that, that kind of yeah. answer right now. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, it's you know. Yeah. my sister's daughter was experiencing. Yeah. You know, she said, Auntie Kay, I was receiving so many calls from different people yeah. and telling me mm-hmm. it will be well. And yeah. they don't know what I'm going through, Auntie yeah. Kay. And I, I yeah. you know, I calmed her down. I said, yeah. yes, that's true. You should understand from where we come from, mm-hmm. this is the way we go about it. Yeah. It could yes. be wrong, yeah. but we've all mm-hmm. gotten into that yeah. Yeah. Um, style of yeah. handling or talking or communicating. Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm glad you said that, Phoebe. But, yeah. but people also, in not knowing what to say, I think their fillers because I was reading in um, Sheryl Sandberg's book Option B Mm. where she lost her husband and one of the things she said was there were the non-question asking friends Mm. that that's how she titled titled it Mm. and sometimes being there like you said can just be their presence was felt and that was enough for you yes but my personal experience was that nobody asked me because I was 14 when my mom died Mm. and fought well Four when my dad died. Yeah. So 14 was when I experienced it knowing what how happening? sudden and, and random yes. it, 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 hap- it could, could be. Mm-hmm. And moving in with family members and, and, and living in different spaces mm. was already enough emotional. Yeah. Um, unset- I was, it was emotionally traumatic. Um, and nobody ever asked me how I felt. No, not one. Not one person. How are you feeling? And it was almost as though maybe you know, everybody avoided that conversation and maybe they felt I was too young to have the conversation. So, so for years, I grieved nobody asking me, ah, how are you feeling? So now I find I have an unnecessarily dis- defensive disposition because I figured life out myself. So when people want to assert certain family positions, and so, I'm so quick to shut you down because... I already have that. You didn't ask. Yeah. So it affects your life. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's the greatest way to yeah. be. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. it affects your life years later. Yeah. Yeah. So Zainab, can you speak to like what that suddenness does for you and how it kind of throws you off kilter um, and how you kind of maybe were able to pull yourself together or are you still even dealing, okay. you know, years later? Well, I would say um, I was five when my, my father died. Okay. My father's death was very sudden. Mm -hmm. I was very, very close to my father. Mm -hmm. I mean, my father would get up on a Saturday morning. If he had a party, he would dress me up Mm -hmm. where he's at, and and take me with him. So, you know, that sudden loss, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are quite dismissive Mm -hmm. about it. Oh, you were just a child. Child, But it's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not true that you were just a child. You, You lost somebody who was very, very present Mm -hmm. in your life. And all of a sudden, that person disappears. That's how it feels, though. Yes. It's a disappearance, at least in in youth for me. Yes. And I, 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 there's a sense of anxiety Mm -hmm. that I started feeling from that time that Mm -hmm. I still feel now Mm -hmm. as a 37 year old woman. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it doesn't go. It's just, you know, it's just like, okay, if he steps in the room, mm-hmm. I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. But he just never steps into the room. Into the room. Mm-hmm. And you, you don't, you don't get over it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 32 years later mm-hmm. and I'm still very much mm-hmm. gr- grieving and mm-hmm. very much affected. Yeah. And very recently, Phoebe and I had a conversation, um, about cho- uh, a set of children in my son's school mm-hmm. who had been bereaved, who lost their father. And I immediately, Messaged the school administrator and I said, I want to get them into counseling. Mm. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that never really happened mm. because I can just imagine mm-hmm. what the families or they know, no, no, they don't need it. The, yeah. But I really wanted to rescue those kids from yes. what yeah. I had to go through, through mm-hmm. for yeah. the last 32 years. Yeah. You, you, you have to, you know, because nobody's going, they, yeah. nobody asks you. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody. And you have to unpack it unless you, it's it's all in there. It's all in there, and mm. I'm I'm still unpacking. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm still unpacking. Mm-hmm. You know, I lost my brother what f- five years ago now, mm-hmm. and you know, again, it's another. It's like oh, that scab just came right, right off, mm-hmm. and you know, the wound is really really sore, and mm-hmm. it's it's. You know, people say, get over it, move on, you know, it is well, it's, you know, 
none of those comforting words no. make a it, difference. It, it, it doesn't make a difference. Mm. It, it doesn't help. You should, you should, you know, so, so again, like Phoebe was saying, you can be very present mm -hmm. or you know what? You can dig deep. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? How are you feeling today? Mm. What is it? What is it like for you? Mm. Do you yeah. want, can you explain yeah. Yeah. how you're feeling? feeling. Yeah. yeah. Don't be afraid yeah. to, you know, don't just turn up for the funeral yeah. and bring bottles of water and, yeah. Puff, puff. and yeah, and puff, puff, <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. and then, and then after the funeral is over, mm -hmm. everybody checks out. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh my You're God. Left alone. Yeah. You know, and then, be sensitive. Mm. You know, I had just started a new job in Nigeria. I'd, I'd moved that January. I moved to Lagos on the 9th of January. Mm -hmm. And um, five days later, my brother rings, because my brother had been ill. Mm -hmm. So my brother rings me and tells me that my brother had gone into a coma. Mm -hmm. I'd only seen him a few days before because mm -hmm. I came back to Accra for the weekend. And I remember that I left taking it for granted that... Mm -hmm. I would come back, mm. you know, the weekend after, after, and he would be there. Mm. And, you know, and I get a call, he's gone into a coma, you need to come home, mm. you know? And that was it. From mm. the ninth, when I started a new job, between the ninth and the 27th and the 9th of February, my brother had died and been buried. And, mm. you know, I had started a new job, I had to go back to work, mm -hmm. you know, people, rallied around me but i had one person you know and god forgive me because i still haven't forgiven him and he asked me he wanted the details the very details and i was thinking to myself yeah why do you want the, the details? details if you don't have anything to say yeah you yeah. know yeah. can you keep it moving okay. yeah you know and i'm like that's another thing about lack of sensitivity, sensitivity. yeah people want to know the How? story yeah. You don't need, you need to, you know the story. It's on a need to know no basis, basis yeah. or if I want to tell, tell you, you. Yeah. it is not your business. Mm. You, if you want to support me in my grief, there are many other ways for you mm. to do so. Yeah. You don't need to know how the person died. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Mm. I think that, you know, as a society, we just really, really need to do better mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if you don't, if you don't know what to say, like don't Phoebe say anything said, at all. Don't, don't say, say anything. anything. Yeah. And if you do want to say something, be ready to dig deep because the person may be, may may be feel ready like to, le to let it out. Yeah. Then are you just going to be like, hmm? No. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's, so don't know, start what you can't finish. Yeah. Don't start what you can't that's finish. That's the thing. People are not ready to invest that much yes. No. Yes. in your yes. process. Generally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, they just want to, like you said, drop the water and the puff puff and go. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what tradition dictates. And mm. that's why. It, it requires so much time and effort on their part that they're not ready to do it. And a lot of people actually don't know what to do yeah. in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I like some of the terminologies that are coming out that you should never say. Mm. It is well. Yeah. Okay. I'm praying for you. Yeah, I'm yeah. praying for you. They're in yeah. heaven now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we may, we may come yeah. from a Christian background, but at that time, the intensity of the pain that the person is going through... Yeah. Words cannot penetrate that cloud. Now, whilst words can't penetrate, yes. I do believe that an awkward silence is an awkward silence. Yes. So what is the one-liner? Is it, you know, um, may her soul rest in peace, may her soul rest in peace, okay. my thoughts are with you, okay. and that is fine. I was trying to find what the word sadness actually meant in my own native tongue, and I couldn't find a specific word for that emotion and that struck me as being that if there isn't a specific word there are words that you can put together that can imply a feeling but the fact that if you have a specific feeling you're going to have to um, speak three or four sentences before you can actually express how you're feeling shows that the culture as a whole in Africa doesn't even take into account the different threads of feeling. I mean, being sad, being unhappy, being uncomfortable, um, you know, um, um, not just even being in the mood, not wanting to be present. These are all different aspects of an emotion that you can feel for, you know, a, a, within a minute, for example. And the fact that 
culture doesn't accommodate that for me shows that there is a real dialogue issue. And I think that the way to go forward or the way that we can actually transcend from this clog is to have more dialogue about it. Just before Christmas holidays, he died in a car crash. So when the holidays are coming, I typically would escape. I don't want to be around family. I'm sure they noticed because like my dad would make plans. <sighs> He'd make plans for us to all meet up either somewhere in Dubai, Ethiopia. There was a time he said, oh, Yankari, everyone went to Yankari, which was beautiful. But I always had a reason to not want to be there because I was just sad every time around the holidays. Um, I still am. Even last Christmas, I looked for an excuse to stay away and not be around everyone because I knew we just lost mommy. And I knew that it would just be a hard time. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to hear was God knows best. Okay. Okay, all right, fine. I accept that phrase, God knows best. But he should know that he should have stopped my father's death knowing that we already were suffering. It hasn't been a year since we lost mommy. Why didn't he stop that if he knows best so that the man didn't have to suffer? We don't have to suffer the pain. So when people would call me, I said, God, God. And I, at some point I said, no, don't call your God here. I said, there is no God. I don't know if I said that to you. There are a few people I said that to. And you know, yeah, where, where was your God? And I still ask that sometimes, where are you? Do you understand? But somebody said to me, one of the few people I actually allowed, you know, sort of minister, because I didn't want to hear anything God. <laughs> she said, you know what's, ha what's, what's funny is, we're not supposed to question, but I'm sure God is looking at you and allowing you to question, and he's going to surprise you in many ways. He's going to prove to you that he is God and he exists. And I don't want to say too much, but she was right, because I'm seeing things. Things are happening. I feel my parents' presence every time. So initially, I fought, yeah, I fought God. I fought him hard. I threw in my Bibles, you know? I just didn't want to hear anything. Oh, but now he's manifesting himself. He said to me, my child, you know what? You've been through enough. He's been through and you won't understand the reason. Maybe there is no reason. Maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know. Go through this thing in different phases. There's some times where you need your space. And there's some times where you're actually clamoring for that emotional attention. Mm -hmm. So because people are reading your moods and don't know how to read your moods, mm -hmm. they don't know when it's safe to say something. Yeah. What would you say about that space? Because you could, you could come at me and it's a time where I actually don't want to talk about it. You have to be very polite about it. Okay. Um, or diplomatic. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. here, people just feel the moment you... You let them know, oh, I need my space. You're being mm -hmm. quite rude. rude. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. how, how they see it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I would rather say communicate through other means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Messaging. Messaging. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp. Yeah. Send your information or send your, your messages through those mm -hmm. mediums. Mm -hmm. And it's it's up to the person to understand mm -hmm. what you mean mm -hmm. yeah. because you've said it or you've you've communicated mm -hmm. in a particular way let him mm -hmm. or her respond yeah. and maintain that that level of okay. um, response yeah. so until, always maintain a respectable distance absolutely yes. okay. until you are ready to speak or mm -hmm. you are ready to talk then mm -hmm. pick up the phone, mm -hmm. send a letter, send yeah. an email, mm -hmm. and say, oh, no, you could come mm -hmm. talk you with see, me. It also yeah. depends on the degree of relationship. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Because some people, you don't want them to be too far. Far, yeah. absolutely. Maybe yeah. just hovering around the, your door, yeah. Yeah. but not too far. Because oh, yeah. what you said, it's actually very important that nobody asked you yeah. how you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, that's the thing. So somebody needs to stay close enough to know mm -hmm. I think it's time. I think I can, mm -hmm. we can yes. start talking so, yeah. now. Yeah. 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 That's, That's right. why um, we talked about the difference between the funeral. There's so much focus on the funeral yeah. that people don't realize, okay, we need to actually designate like these 
children, mm-hmm. someone to stay close enough. Mm-hmm. It could, it should be a professional, be, but yeah. let's just be honest. Yeah. In our culture, we don't do that. Mm-hmm. We, it's embarrassing. But we need to what normalize that. Yeah. Yeah. Normalize. I think that yeah. in our culture, it's also not safe to speak to certain people about, who are going to open up certain wounds with some of the inappropriate things they say. Yeah. You'll be okay. They rub your back and go back. To, yeah. Like it's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a little it's, bit it's off-putting. Yeah. yeah. It's a little off-putting, yeah. for lack of better words, to yeah. throw. Yeah throw it to an auntie yeah. or throw it because yeah. believe me yeah. I wasn't trying to talk to no auntie yeah. <laughs> you know like I just I was just yeah. or I was so done yeah. with all of you yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to like the aftermath of okay. uh, you know unpacking the mental health issues mm. so one of my and, and I only just found out when I spoke to my brother this is years later because even amongst us as siblings mm. we never discussed what it was like losing my mom like it was yeah. never because they were um, already in school abroad I was the only one who experienced the mm-hmm. situation First with her. Yeah. We never talked about how it felt mm. as a family, a family. Yeah. of siblings yeah. to lose, you know, everybody kind of reacts in different ways. Yeah. Um, so I want to kind of speak to the aftermath of the, the moving on mm-hmm. okay, and the going back. What are some of the mental health, um, I guess, processes okay that you would say if you're feeling this way maybe you should do this if you're feeling that way maybe you should do this because it wasn't there for me so i just really want to help somebody out there (laughs) i understand um the first thing that i would say is and um oh sorry let me just add something to that sure and 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 narrow it down so it's Mm. not so broad so if a child is let's just say 13 yeah you know they just lost their parent and you want to put them in boarding school, that's probably not a good idea. Mm-mm. Because that tends to be the easiest thing to do for most Africans, because that child is not your responsibility. Yeah. And nobody wants to own up to taking care of that yeah, child. Yeah. So is, is boarding school a good way of putting a child who has just gone through grief? No, who are they asking no, the questions? No. If, like you said, there's no counseling yes. in the school, yeah. no. there's nothing. So I want to kind of speak to how we can yeah. reshape those norms in Africa. Okay. Um, the first thing that I realized that we have to do as a people is we have to stop avoiding mm. The hurt Avoid and the pain. Mm-hmm. We have to go through it. Mm-hmm. There's no better. I mean, the reason why, you know, you two lovely women are still feeling. Mm-hmm. Sorry, three lovely women mm-hmm. are still feeling it because I know you're also feeling mm-hmm. it. The pain mm-hmm. of the loss is because you haven't faced the pain. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the mechanisms that we're taught is, okay, avoid it, avoid it, mm-hmm. go around it, yeah. kind of immerse yeah. yourself in something yeah. else, I'll help you forget about it. No. Mm-hmm. The first thing we have to do is go through the pain. Mm. Go through the crying. Nobody should say stop crying, cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get it yeah. out of your system. Mm-hmm. You know, talk about the person. Mm-hmm. Talk about the person. Say, no, 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 you're going to hurt people around you. It's okay. It's normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal. We have to normalize grief. Mm. It's not a strange thing to still... Because it happens. (laughs) Yeah, it happens. It's normal. Mm -hmm. You know, we lose, you know, people that we love. And we are told to mourn with those who mourn. So Mm -hmm. we mourn together, Mm -hmm. you know, as a people. So first thing, avoid avoiding it. Yes. Yes. You know, um, go through the process. Go through the pain. By all means, I would... I would advice that someone qualified is close by Mm -hmm. obviously with one um family Family member member. or close friend that is also close to the situation close to the person so Mm -hmm. don't pick someone from the village you haven't seen for 15 years to come and support you yeah it needs to be someone close by if one parent is gone and one parent is remains that parent needs to stay close Mm -hmm. not far away because what happens to the children is now it's the loss is staggering because Mm -hmm. they are thinking okay so could anybody just disappear, else disappear from my life suddenly? Yeah. And so it leaves them in that state of, it's like an imbalance. Mm. They're not quite sure what is reality, what isn't, what is going to happen tomorrow. So, I mean, like you said, you have to build, mm-hmm. you know, barriers and, mm-hmm. and you know, edifices around mm-hmm. you to kind of strengthen you yep. from, mm-hmm. you know, your inside. Mm-hmm. But they are not the real thing. Mm-hmm. Because the strength should come from within. Mm-hmm. But the strength it will only be built up when you you come to terms with what has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, some children, too, sometimes feel like they are to blame. Mm-hmm. They feel guilty. Mm-hmm. I wasn't around. Mm-hmm. If I'd been around, um, 
I didn't grieve enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, they're still struggling. Why, why wasn't I there? But what was the last conversation we had? I, that's one of those oh, haunting you just, things. You've just hit a, mm -hmm. a tough spot because I... Um, piggybacking off of what you, you said in terms of um, guilt. Um, my mom died of a gas explosion and I carried the gas upstairs that particular day. And when you speak of guilt, I carried that thing for years. Mm. And because nobody ever asks you how you're feeling, mm. if I was able to say, I felt somebody would have been able to say, it wasn't your fault. Yes, yes. And I mean, I've forgiven myself for it, but I think it's because it's, somebody has just recently just told me it actually wasn't your fault. Wow. That I'm able to kind of, I, I now know it's not my fault, but if I've been able to let go of that pain earlier, yeah. no then maybe, maybe, maybe I wouldn't feel the way, you know, I wouldn't still be holding on to this because clearly yeah. it's still quite raw. Yeah. Um, so I've grieved the loss. I've, I've, I've taken on the great memories, but those little things of, you know, I, I knew my mom was hungry that day and she wanted to eat rice. So I was doing superhero and I carried the gas thinking this woman is hungry you know, let her just cook this rice so I can, I was watching Whitney Houston on TV, so I just wanted her to cook her rice and leave me alone. But if somebody had actually asked me, you know, um, how, you know, how are you, you know, how are you feeling? I would have been able to say, ah, auntie, yeah. you know, I feel like it's my fault. Yes. yes. And that would have been done. And that, yeah. that probably that auntie that. that knew that yes. I had that would have kept on maybe telling people, ah, yeah. she's thinking it's her fault. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. It would have maybe softened the blow a little bit. Yes. So questions for me are very, very important to ask. So as much as we talk about, you know, being silent and, uh, or, or not saying the appropriate things, I think yeah. asking simple questions yeah. like, how are you, yeah. are important to, you, you know, that yeah. avoidance thing, let's not yeah. avoid it, no, are important to it. the healing process yeah. that could start way earlier. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, yes. I mean, Zainab, maybe I can ask you when you identified a healing process, because clearly I've identified it, but I haven't completely now healed so, from it. Yeah. But it's at least good to identify what the guilt is. Was it that you didn't see him early enough? Was it, was it that last call that... You couldn't get to him earlier. I don't know. I think that um, for me, I I did I carry that guilt of mm. not being here, and um, him feeling that me leaving without saying goodbye would have made him feel feel that he didn't mean. Mm -hmm. he wasn't important to me mm. and I didn't love him and um, I had a dream and I saw him and he looked really well and he hugged me and he said I know that you love me that was a, a huge healing point for me I don't know that anybody could have told me that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would have, it would have been okay. okay. Until you saw it in the dream. Until I saw it in the dream. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's, that's more personal. Mm. Because yeah. at least you know it came directly from him. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, whichever way you find it, you know, yeah. it could come from the external. And of course, for you, it was more internal. internal yeah. Um, we hope, you know, the internal works you know, for us most but, of the time. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, yeah. as people, you know, the point of this conversation is to ask those questions. Yes. How is somebody feeling and not expect people yeah. to get over it? I think we lack compassion as a whole in Africa, yes. you know, and, and understandably because the economy is so hard and we're, mm. we, we've just been There's built so many people. with iron. <laughs> it's just, too much. I think, that I think that it's excessive. Uh, I think um, that there has to be, you know, especially in schools mm. because... Again, as a five-year-old losing my dad, mm -hmm. being absent from school for a long period of time, yeah. um, coming back to school, and because um, my dad died in January, mm -hmm. so we had only just come back to school, mm -hmm. and I don't know remember how long we were off school for, yeah. but I remember coming into school and feeling like 
everybody knows. Mm. Yeah. And everyone was staring at you. And everyone yes. was staring at me. Yes. But nobody asked me. Yes. Yeah. And no teacher came up to me no, and said no. anything. So we don't have these conversations in so, the school as a whole. And yeah. so, so nobody said anything. Mm. And, and quite recently, um, I got in touch with my music teacher. And mm. he said to me how one day he was teaching a song and the song had father in it. Mm. And he taught the song and he just realized that I was at the in the second row. Mm -hmm. And he looked at my face and I had been sobbing. I don't remember the incident. Mm -hmm. And he said till today, he never taught that song again. Mm. Oh. And it just goes to show mm -hmm. that, you know, perhaps, you know, in hindsight for him, if he had been more attentive, he may mm -hmm. not have necessarily taught that song mm -hmm. that, day. that day. And because, I mean, it's people just dismiss mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the age yes. Yes. that yeah. you're yeah. feeling Yeah, anything. feelings are feelings. Yeah. Feelings are feelings. But feelings are feelings. And even yeah. as an adult, you know, mm -hmm. as well, they expect you to be yeah. over, it over it and be Because you're grown. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. or, that you, or even when you have to be strong for your kids. Because I think even with parents sometimes, yes. Yes. you're necessarily strong for the kids. Yes. And it's okay for the kids to see you cry. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's actually okay. No. I mean, yes. I understand yes. the protection. Yes. 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 But you can't cover everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yes. you feel it even though you're not crying. Even exactly. though they don't physically see you cry. Exactly. Children because are sensitive. If, if, if you do that as well, the children are like, oh, did my mother ever really love loved my father, father or yeah. vice versa yes or my, yes, yes. You, like you're saying yeah. and like you need to and we have to start with them they mm -hmm. need to see that yeah. crying is okay yeah grieving is okay otherwise yes. you'll grow up with the same mm -hmm. challenges that some of us grew mm -hmm. up with mm -hmm. yeah you know and because i know one lady who her mom was broken i mean she lost weight in mm -hmm. no time mm -hmm. you know and but the mother was trying so hard to keep it hidden yeah. from the children. And I know that they thought, uh, oh, what's that problem between them? They, yeah. No, but this woman genuinely loved mm -hmm. her husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's and this all boils down to love. And we have to understand that grief, grieving properly, mm -hmm. is incorporated in love. Yes. It's okay to yeah. grieve. Yeah. You know, it's a loving process. It's yeah. nothing that should scare yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. healthy, but I mean, some yeah. people take it to another level. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the person's emotion, yeah. Yeah. some cannot cope yeah. and handle yeah. and even manage. Yeah. So you see, yeah. that's why these protective uh, mechanisms yeah. turn to form. Around around us. them, yes. 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 But, around them. <coughs> Sorry, go ahead. But it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Because no. I remember that when my brother passed, mm. and I remember I called a friend and I said to her, I'm going mad. I'm losing my mind. Mm. I need to speak to somebody. Mm. And actually, before I spoke to her, I'd called my older brother and I'd said the same thing to him. And he said, oh, don't worry. You'll be fine. You'll mm. be okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I said to my friend, I said, you need to, I need to speak to somebody. Yeah. And she said, Zainab, if you need to speak to somebody, mm -hmm. you need to speak to somebody. And she, you know, she gave me a number for somebody who mm -hmm. could help me. But it was a case where if I didn't get the help, she didn't I, even ask. Or if I didn't help. ask for that help, mm -hmm. my state of, I wasn't, you know, for lack of a better word, I wasn't stable mentally mm -hmm. anymore yeah, exactly. yeah. because I was suffering mm. from this grief. Mm. And, you know, it's just such a taboo mm -hmm. yes. in our society yeah. to say that you are suffering, suffering. for this grief, grief from yeah. this grief. And, you know, months later, my, my brother as well had a breakdown mm. and his, his words to me were, that Thing you were feeling, mm. he I now started feeling it yeah, too. too. Imagine. But I you know because it silent it actually silences everybody on the inside automatically like yes. as soon as it happens yeah. you're silent because like i said I was, yes. my siblings and i didn't talk about it yeah, yeah. but we were all silently suffering with this mm -hmm. loss yes. at different ages mm -hmm. i was 14 my brothers were 16 yes. and 18 mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. yeah. you know i mean it's the worst age to probably yeah. lose yeah. a parent yeah. because you don't understand the you're protected you don't really understand the vastness of the world no, yes. no. So you're not and, exposed you know, to as, a world that you have so to survive. So as a counselor, mm -hmm. basically, you just have to you create the space mm -hmm. for them to grieve naturally. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, for the first few sessions, that's basically what you need to do yeah. because 
I'm sorry, our society doesn't allow it. Mm, no. At home, you can't grieve. Yeah. At work, you can't, can't grieve. grieve yeah. At school, you can't grieve. There's so you, so we, many people. There are so many people who think it's inappropriate yeah. to yeah. in yeah. public. Why? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you need to come into a safe space where, you know, there's your tissue, there's water. That, let it out. Okay. Go through it. Go through it. I mean, I know you want the coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. but you can't cope. Sometimes you, there's no coping. You, there's, just there's cry. Yeah, to, you, you need do. to yeah. get it out of your yeah. system. When you go, when you have um, mental health issues, which has to do with your mindset, which has to do with your soul, you must speak to therapists, coaches who are um, experienced, before you even go into seeing the psychiatrist, you understand. So, but most people, you speak to a counselor, but most people, you know, go to church and they have the counselor there who tells them to fast and pray, which is okay. But like I said, there's three dimensions there. And when it comes to a certain point, you must now relate, transfer them to the appropriate quarters. But because of the stigma, shame, how will you tell someone that, you know, you're mentally challenged? And it's because of the ignorance. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not a stigma. It doesn't mean you're going crazy. And it just means that, you know, you have a headache, you take something. You have a backache, you take something. It's the same way. If you find that you, your head, you cannot internalize things uh, uh, more. You have a brain freeze. You cannot do certain things. You need to slow down and begin to ask yourself some very, very important questions. Why are you feeling this way? What are the things that have caused you to feel this way? Can you do something about it? That is what it's all about. Hey, can you sort of speak to that? The way you live your life, are you conscious of mortality? Are you more conscious of mortality <laughs> now? And how do you sort of live with your relationships in the present? Yes, I am. Um, well... You can't run away from death. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Mm. It happens. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it will happen eventually. Yeah. So um, I just say to myself, be happy. Mm -hmm. Enjoy every moment of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, be outgoing. Be friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, face the situation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. comes your way. Mm -hmm. And be positive. Yeah. Be positive about everybody and anything around you. Mm -hmm. There are some circumstances you can't really um, control. Mm -hmm. Let it pass through, like um, uh, Phoebe is saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain situations. Go through them. Yeah. Yeah. And every situation has a solution. Yes. And you will find a solution. Yes. So take it and yeah. move on. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, my, my thing would be mm. to try to take it one day at a time. Yes. Good. And try to get through your mental, mental health, health just for that day. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Because if you think about the magnitude of you, yeah. ne of this never ending, it can actually yeah. make you yeah. go mad. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. And just some last thoughts for you about how, how conscious you are of, of living. I think that um, I try to be very present mm -hmm. yeah especially the moments, in, yeah. yes and enjoying the moment in the life of my loved ones mm -hmm. the people that i hold mm -hmm. very dear to me i try to be there i think yeah. that you know even to an extent it's i think i may have even have gone overboard because i don't really go out much anymore yeah. i don't socialize yeah. so much yeah. but it's sort of like okay it's the weekend i'm spending time with my family, family yeah. i yeah. want to be with my family yeah. i don't want to really you know do so much yeah. outside of them, yeah. outside of that so i guess maybe as the years go on i try i'll try and balance it out mm -hmm. but for me this is this is what works for me keeping yeah. all my loved ones as close yeah. as i as i can mm -hmm. and phoebe that's fine. i would say forgive quickly Mm. Mm. Forgive quickly. Even, and even yourself. Even yourself. As well. yeah. even yourself. Forgive quickly. Let go of it quickly. And um, like she said, just try and enjoy the moment. Mm. You know, try not to live ahead of yourself. Mm. So you, you yeah. know, you're sitting here and you're already at home preparing dinner. Yeah. Be here. Yeah. Be here. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. here. Yeah. And. Um, and always and believe in yourself. Believe that you have the strength to yeah. deal with whatever is yeah. going to come. Yeah. And yeah, 
I well, think. thank you very much. You're very welcome. welcome. For that very candid and raw <laughs> <laughs> conversation. Yeah. Well, I guess my, my summary would really be to take risks yeah. and live life in its fullest. Yeah. I, I would say... It, just try it once you know yes. what i mean like don't be so held back because you spend so many times overthinking things yeah. i think in your living even in safeguarding against it yeah. try to prepare wills it makes life easier for your family members yeah, yeah, yeah. because all this fighting and everything over oh, money yeah. it's all it, yeah. it's, it's, it's it all does a materialistic material things they don't soothe the pain no you no. run into the court so if you know your children are going to be fighting over a house Get a foreign, yeah. foreign yeah. trustee to manage the estate or something yeah. because yeah, yeah. you just don't want fights over property yeah. when really and truly yeah. that's what actually distracts from the healing. Because yeah. yeah. people end up fighting over property because there's no will. Mommy is the one that left me this necklace. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just find it ridiculous. Yeah, it is. You know, and it I find is. that family members shouldn't be as greedy. You know, <laughs> yeah, because you know it, it, it makes a difference when you can look back at yeah. what your family. Um, what your father passed on. Yes. Some people have dealt with people squandering their inheritance. Yes. yes. You know, so there are too many dynamics in this death thing that actually makes the, the healing process worse. Yes. Because not only have you lost someone, now you are suffering on top of it. Yes. So at least if I'm... <laughs> if I, you know, money <laughs> makes... So money, makes a, <laughs> money makes a lot of things, all right, so... <laughs> and if you're unsure of what to do, cut a check. <laughs> Well, I'm happy we could end this episode on a high note. Thank you guys for joining us. If you would like to join the conversation, you can use the hashtag Chick Chat Live. If you'd like to send us a topic, send us an email. Our contact information is on the screen. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next episode of Chick Chat Live. Bye for now.